We said, hey, it's been a long time since we found these. And I said, yeah, we have not found these. And I said, it's been months. And lo and behold, at the bottom of the last bin we went through, we found them. Here they are. You got to look out for these. We in the garage, Mike, the Golden State Picker, got a really good video today. A lot of stuff we sold, some stuff we found, something very cool that I found. I found a couple of cool things, but something very interesting. You wouldn't think, how did this thing survive, how it got to savers? We're going to talk about that in the first part of this video. Uh, got one really cool item. It's actually four, but uh, it sold, and we will take a look at that. We'll talk reselling. If you're new, I'm Mike. I'm out of San Jose, California. Been doing this for five years, selling on eBay and Amazon full time. So, 62 years old, heading towards full retirement, something like that. I don't know how it's going to shape out, shape shape up. I should shape out. Uh, how, how it's going to be interesting. We'll see. If you watch my videos, you know what I'm talking about. All right. Ah, oh, it is. I'm telling you something real quick. Uh, heat wave here in California. Unbelievable. It is October 5th, and we've had, this is the third day of 100. We think we have one more day of 100 degrees here. Uh, very unusual. This is usually called our Indian summer. I'm going to straighten this out a little bit. And it's just a little off right now. Boy, it's it's crazy as far as the temperature goes. It is about 6 o'clock, 6.30 Saturday night. I'm trying to give you a timestamp, and it's still very hot inside this garage. Got the door open. Wow, it is wild. The weather's been wild. Uh, praying for all my my friends in North Carolina, basically. Uh, they, are, they are being hit hard. Florida, too. Don't forget Florida. Georgia, all up in that south part of the country there, uh, the panhandle of Florida. And it looks like uh, another one is going to potentially hit the west, co the west coast of Florida midweek. Unbelievable. So anyhow, let's get into what we found and talk reselling, and then we'll get right into what we sold here. Um, you got to keep, in, you, you see me do books. I love to do books. Uh, I never intended to be a book guy. I was going to sell books, but I never got into it as much as I have now with the bins that I get. And then the longer you get into something, the more involved you get, obviously, and the more interesting it gets you, the stuff you find, the stuff you're looking for and hoping for. And I've been hoping for these. And sometimes I split some bins with my friend Tyler and uh, we were doing uh, some bins and uh, we were talking and we said, hey, it's been a long time since we found these. And I said, yeah, we have not found these. And I said, it's been months. And lo and behold, at the bottom of the last bin we went through, we found them. Here they are. You got to look out for these. Some of you know. Easton Press Books, the 100 Greatest Books. We found 25, okay? So we split them up. We do a little bit of stuff like that. And this is Herman Melville, Moby Dick. I'm going to show you there are several versions of Easton Press. There's a lot involved, okay? They are cool to find, but some are not worth a lot of money. They're worth fair money, but nothing great. Like this might be $25. It looks like a super book, brand new, never been read. But then you might find... Now look at they're all just different okay they look really cool if you've never seen Easton Press they look great on a bookshelf in a library that kind of thing now there's another one this is the adventure series <coughs> excuse me the last of the Mohicans James Fenimore Cooper you can see it's a little different look at the <coughs> cover see it okay these now can be worth some money these can be worth a hundred 150, 250, 300, we don't know. We will let you know when we sell them. But finding 25 of, we found like, I believe 13 or 13 of these and 12 of this here. So you can see, keep your eye out at estate sales, that kind of thing. Today I was at a garage sale, nothing at garage sales today. Oh, I got one item I'm gonna show you that I wanted to show you. Uh, I went into this one community church sale and they had, 
It looked like Hardy Boy, the blue flashlight series. I thought maybe they were all there and I could maybe work a deal. And they weren't. There was just various ones there, but I was hoping maybe all, I think there's 64. And if all 64 were there, maybe I could have cut a deal. Because that's how you really, you can sell them individually, but it's really nice if you can sell a, a whole set. I'm trying to compi compi compile two sets, one of Nancy Drew and one of the flashlight. So uh, the numbers didn't match up for me. But that, there you go. Keep looking. You never know when you're going to find these sets. Look for Bible sets, all that kind of stuff too. All right, the other items. Uh, this one was the garage sale. And I started off with this one. <coughs> Excuse me, I got a little touch of something. Sorry about that. This is Mr. Peanut. And it's a peanut butter maker. Okay, very interesting. And I paid a dollar. So I got it for a dollar. Nothing fantastic. It's not going to sell for, you know, 50, 60 bucks. But, oh man, there he is. Mr. Peanut. All the pieces are in there. We'll see what we can get for, for him. Uh, very interesting piece. Just giving me fits. Don't bounce around and break. I'll put that over here. So that was a dollar. I looked through her booth, her, her garage sale, basically. And she was giving stuff away. And I couldn't find anything else that I wanted in there. It was a lot of knickknacks and stuff like that. And some other things for Christmas, but nothing, nothing fantastic. Went to Savers afterwards. So I do my regular routine on Saturday. We talk about that. Garage sales. Then I flip over to Savers for an hour or so and see what's going on. Walked in. This is on the shelf, and it's a popcorn bucket, the Haunted Mansion Mickey. There's the price. I'm going to leave the price on this one, $3.99, $40, I think, $40 for Mickey. We will see. It's close to Halloween. We should be still be able to get rid of Mickey. He's no peeling, no nothing. Looks very, very clean. There were a couple vintage Winnie the Pooh and Eeyore uh, Disney items that were I don't, they're the older, the late, early 70s. And the way you can tell is it says Walt Disney Productions. They were plush. They wanted $5 each, and it was Winnie the Pooh and Eeyore. And I just couldn't pull the trigger. I just couldn't find a comp that made me feel comfortable buying that. It just, it doesn't work, you know. I, I always try to make some good money. The books you see me do, that's because, hey, they're, I'm always thinking very much like zero cost in my head get that $100 back. But anyhow, uh, I passed on those two particular things. But this item I'm going to show you is the one that's pretty cool. It's heavy. I'm going to try and get it over to you and not screw this thing up, all right? Oh, goodness, I'm already starting to screw it up. Don't hook. Don't hook. Didn't hook. There it is. I'm going to try and turn it around and show you. It is a Girard uh, A-type turn table. Now, I'm going to try and show you why it's so cool. Look at, look at on the top. See that plastic? That is the dust cover. I'm going to put this back, not shred. Hopefully not fall. I'll take it back and show you. Very delicate. This is, this is the dust cover. Look at this. Just a piece of plastic molded. Got a couple of cracks in it. But how did this survive? over time right you just wonder you can just oh it's so fragile there's the gerard sticker still on it uh you could sell this piece by itself for 35 to 50 dollars i fear shipping this this is a problem right now for me thinking how am i going to do this so you saw how it went on there i'm going to put it over here carefully and i want to show you the turntable because it also has some very unique things on it it's heavy as all get out and uh, I'm going to flip it up here. You can look at this. Look at the, this is the record holder. It's bent at an angle. Very strange and unique. It has this piece here for stacking records. And you move it with this lever. Now, what's great is it works. And it is in amazing condition. Now, this is the head shell. Underneath there is the, uh, the, the uh, stylus. Everything else, look at that, the, the arm, tone arm holder, everything works. If you have a specific stylus, this head shell alone could be 200 bucks. Now, overall, this is in excellent condition. Like I said, it works, but it's not an extremely expensive unit. Uh, maybe 100 to 150. Maybe I'm going to part it out. I don't know. I hate to do that. I might even take it to North Carolina. It's $12.99 is what the price of it is. 
that was at Savers. Look at that beautiful Girard. And I, I just might take this up there and use it. Uh, we'll see. Uh, still have to get it back there. So I'd still have to ship it. And this dust cover is very fragile, but that would look really cool in my uh, soon to be upstairs eBay slash man cave room. So that's it. That's what I got today. And I uh, got a couple of books, but nothing special. I got them from, for free. I also got some free DVDs. That'll get a few dollars, but nothing uh, crazy. Let me move these out of the way so I can get some room. And then I want to talk about one subject really quick about eBay that drives me a little crazy. Now, don't get me wrong. I straight shooter here. I, I tell you how I feel. Um, when it comes to stuff, you know me, I'm very... Uh, I like to figure out things myself. If something breaks, like my air conditioner has been giving me the fritz, I've got to change the motor, and uh, I've been doing a lot of that work myself. I enjoy doing that stuff. It's satisfying, rewarding, all that. Now, what I don't like to me is stuff that was is lazy. I don't like lazy stuff. I feel like, hey, a lot of people get into this lazy mode, and it bugs me, and it bugs me when it comes to eBay, when you've bought something and it's like a Friday afternoon and there's not much I can do with it until Monday, okay? But then you're inquiring and you're doing something like this. This is what this one particular purchaser was asking. Do you have an estimated time of delivery? Well, first off, don't have a label yet. No, okay? And uh, I said, I'm packing it tonight, okay? And then the person says, so how long do you think it will take? Well, I said, I'm packaging it tonight. And they kept kind of going on and on. And I said, look, nicely as best I can, you need to check the tracking. The tracking is what you need to check. I said, hey, they were in Tennessee. I can understand maybe the weather. I'm just checking. Okay, but again, uh, I said, you need to follow the tracking. That's all you can do. I can drop it off at the post office. This is probably a post office item. It's very small. And you need to go and do that. But this is what I mean. It's like it's like people don't take this initiative. I really feel like they just don't step in there and say, look, let's see what's happening here. I'm, okay? It happens a lot. When they don't check their own tracking, you got the tracking, check it and see what it says. That's all I know. I don't know anymore. Okay? I can go on and on. I can get in trouble. I can get in big time trouble, so I gotta be careful. All right, let's get into uh, what we sold. We sold here, get this, 23 items, $1,440 worth of stuff. Two days, so $720 a day average, which is well above my $500 a day average gross on eBay. And I also have Amazon, so cool. Oh, all right, where do we start? Let's just start right off with this, uh, the new uh, items I got basically. Uh, I was at the flea market, and there was a table, and it had all of this stuff on it. It had a bunch of this. It had 35 pieces of this. Uh, she's an artist slash now home make, homewares maker. She passed away, uh, Carol Boys, and this is her work. She does, like, this is a cheese slicer or cutter. You can kind of see it. looks all the same. I did not know what this was, if it was a necklace holder or what. I had no clue, but I knew they would sell. Now I paid 275 for 35 pieces of hers plus a few Arthur Court pieces that they threw in. Uh, I already sold one piece for 30, okay? This piece sold for 100, this piece sold for 50. So I'm 180 in, so I've almost got my money back. I'm 100 bucks short and I still have 32 pieces of this left. So I'm, I'm gonna do pretty good with it, I think. $11 shipping, $16 shipping, so uh, nice. Same buyer, I love that. And I thought that might happen with a few of the pieces that uh, the one buyer might buy one or two pieces. And that has happened here. I'm gonna try and put this stuff where I don't, I can make some room basically. All right, a brusser. What is a brusser? All it is is a range finder, very basic range finder. Uh, up to, I think, 800 yards. Nothing fantastic. Some golf range finders uh, can go for quite a bit of money, so keep your eye out for that. Uh, the range finder sold, for, I think, for uh, $26, 27 plus $10 on the shipping side. 
So nice little find there. You should be able to put that. Well, let's be careful here. We'll stack it right back there. All right. Was that Goodwill? A lot of people say, <coughs> excuse me again. A lot of people say, hey, Mike, you can't find much of Goodwill. No, it's true. Uh, I'll tell you a quick story up here. Uh, one of the main places up in South San Francisco, Goodwill, is closing it. And they're closing it uh, not because it wasn't doing great, I guess, but they're doing something with Arizona. And they have displaced a lot of resellers and a lot of buyers. And there's a lot of, you know, confusion as to what's going on. So they told me, I've talked to a couple people that said that that Goodwill up there was really skimming. And now they're doing some kind of a vintage pop-up themselves. Goodwill. I don't know if you've heard that where Goodwill is getting involved in these pop-ups with vintage clothing and stuff. Interesting. I don't know. Uh, but that's what some of these other resellers were saying. Interesting. This was at Goodwill. I paid $10. It's a wherever super shooter, but it's brand new. Uh, it sold pretty quick. So maybe I underpriced it, but it did sell. Uh, Christmas is coming up, so these super shooters do sell pretty good. And this super shooter sold for 40 plus 15 on the shipping side. So love me the super shooter and uh, can never seem to... I, I saw one today actually at a garage sale, but it was missing. It was missing pieces, so that, that's not going to help. Ah, the makeup. Really doing well with this makeup. Almost all of it's gone. This is OG, and this is a sculpted up oil-tinted hydron... Uh, something, some kind of lipstick or something. And this sold for 23 plus free shipping. It's really simple. Everybody asks, how do you price stuff for shipping? Well, if there's six or seven of these at free, then I'll go free. Or I might drop down and go $16.95 and then drop. But something like this, pretty much if you see a, a good sell-through rate, then take it and put it up for free. It'll sell that quick. So, boom. Let's move Mickey out of the way because Mickey's going to be in the way. Let's put him down there. All right, let's get into some books. Quantum Mechanics for Engineering. This book does not have a lot of columns, okay? And it's very nice. I love looking at this because you ever think of a foreign language and you look at it and you go, that means not, I can't understand it. Well, math formulas mean the same thing to me. Unless it's a dollar sign and a subtraction sign, I'm pretty much, I'm pretty much lost. Oh, how far did you get in high school when it came to math? I got to uh, trigonometry. And at trigonometry, I said, you know, this is not for me. I just didn't want to do it. So I stopped at trig. And I thought physics, I got chemistry, and then after that, I was done with that too. So quantum mechanics, great little book. And the quantum sold for 67 plus $9 shipping. This one were blocked on Amazon, but that's okay because it doesn't get a lot of money anyhow. And this is a seventh edition of Surf Safe Manager. Uh, it's clean, and you got to make sure you double check sometimes in the back of these. They have little test test sections where you can do it. I'm trying to flip to it and get all indexed. That's crazy. Some test questions are in here, that kind of thing. You want to make sure none of it's filled out. And the serve manager sold for 28 plus free shipping. So right there, 80, almost $100. What do we pay for the bin? We always talk about it, 100 There's 100 folks, 67 and 28 Pretty much one bin. Now, another Goodwill find. I bought bunches of these. I think I bought four bunches at about $6.48 for a bunch. And there were like six or seven in each bunch. Cross stitch. And this is a cross stitch of some persimmons. Sunny persimmon. And I can't say the name. Riolis. And uh, I'll tell you, anything we can sell, we got to gotta just keep your eyes open. There's one in there I'm going to get about 100 for. And the cross stitch sold for 20. All right, let's go into the sports portion of the show. All right. Up next, right here. Yonix is a brand. Keep an eye out for it, especially in the tennis world and the badminton world. This came out on a card at Savers. And we have a little uh, thing at Savers. We don't hog. We don't, you know, there's some people just too aggressive. Uh, a cart comes out and another picker was going towards it, said, hey, grab this. I pointed to this. They didn't want it. Okay. I was thinking, you know, what it was. It's a badminton racket. It's by Yonix. 
when I picked it up, there were 449, there were two of them in there. Some, some pickers just, they're not gonna do it. They won't take certain categories or anything that they're just not feeling comfortable with. That's why I say, hey, if you wanna grow your business, you gotta grow your inventory. This is Yonex, you gotta make sure it's original. Believe it or not, these badminton rackets can be counterfeited. Wow, you wouldn't believe that, you wouldn't think that, but yes it is. There is a serial number here, so you wanna get that in your ad, okay? Get the back end, it's made in Japan, okay? Made in Japan's better than made in China. Um, made in Austria for head tennis rackets instead of China. The little subtleties, we talk about that. The little differences that make yours $100 versus $25 or whatever. This sold for $49 plus uh, $17 shipping, I think. $17 shipping. And uh, there's another racket in there that's not worth nearly as much, but I'll try and get $20 bucks for it. Anything I can. Uh, okay, up next, here we go. This is a golf portion, yep, we're gonna stick with sports. We're gonna go through three of them here in a second. This is Diablo by Callaway, it's a six iron, okay? Uh, I have about 50 to 60 um, golf clubs that I need to put up, and this is what I'm doing. Uh, I had a bunch of them uh, that were in this big tub, and I'm taking, I said, you know what, it's time to get them up. So I'm taking two a night. And that's, that's how you think. I'll take two a night, post two a night. And that's what I'm doing here. And this one sold. The Diablo, uh, it got, I think it was $26, 27 plus 13 on the shipping side. So that's how you can think about a death pile too, is if you're struggling, don't try and force it all up unless you have the time. Maybe say to yourself and stick to it, I'm gonna do two a day, okay? Two, four, six, eight, seven days, you got 14 items up. That you gotta do it, you gotta list. If you wanna grow, if you wanna make money, there's only one way. That's to put something up so somebody can buy it, okay? It's a simple, we hear a lot of these pickers, that's all we talk about, list, list, list. Baseball bat, Easton, same day as the badminton. Boom, Easton uh, bat, and um, paid 6.49, I think, for there were three bats, so there were 6.49 each. And uh, this is, I wanna show you, okay? Where am I gonna get it, da, 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 let me find it. Uh, we need to talk about how you have to know about drop 10 and so forth. Here you go. <laughs> See, it says minus 10, okay? And if you look on the knob, this is the knob, it says 31. So from there, we can deduce the weight. Minus 10 from 31 is 21. So this is a 21 ounce bat, drop 10, that's the 10. So you have to find that. You've gotta make sure your item specifics matches up with the bat. They're gonna to wanna to know 31, and they're gonna to wanna to know drop 10 or the ounces, which would be uh, 21, and that would tell them drop 10. So you gotta make sure. Don't be afraid of it. You know, um, so many people are like, oh, I just can't do it. You can do it. I know you can. If I can do it and everybody else can do it, so can you. So please don't give up on areas like this. You might be surprised. All it takes is one or two and you'll get hooked. I swear you'll get hooked. Let's keep going with books. Medical terminology, a living language. I always sit here, you know, I'm like this. I know I looked in there for any highlighting, but I'm double checking as we're going along. The medical terminology sold for 53 plus $9 on the shipping side. Now, stay tuned, I've got the big item. I'm gonna shove it up last. Yep, that's where it's going. It's gonna be up there last. Oh, heavy. Look for the, we talk about manga. Now in manga, there is something called omnibuses, and this is what this is. This is uh, Inusha, and it is a omnibus set. So there's two, three, four. I don't know what number one is, okay? Don't know. Still put them up. And basically, I sold the omnibus for 30 plus nine. Basically, omnibus means one in many. That's what it means. So there could be three volumes in number one, three volumes in number two, and they're they're sought after, uh, believe it or not. Some can go for really good money, so keep that in mind. All right, let's go right here. Don't forget Monopoly. There's all those Monopolies. Every city seems to have one. Well, John Deere had one, John Deere Monopoly. I think I paid three or four bucks for this at Savers. I'm pretty sure that's where I got it. Doesn't sell for a lot of money, but it will sell for good, for decent money. 21 plus 15 on the shipping side. Key here. You gotta get the right box. They used to have the USPS game boxes. They don't do those anymore. Now you gotta find one. And I find uh, these uh, tortilla chip company that uh, 
<clears throat> sells to a restaurant has the absolute perfect box for games. And I pick them up and store them just like I do golf tubes. Because right now, what is it? Christmas is coming. If you've got games, you got to get them up. Keep that in mind. Okay. Up next, you see me collect these and you see me sell them. Dog man. Every single time I get them, I try to put them together. Uh, I can't get enough of the dog man. Dog man was 30, I think, plus uh, 38 plus 18 on the shipping side. There's some commotion going on out there. I have no idea what that is. Ah, we're almost to the end. We are almost at the end. Now. If you know me, this is important right here. Bibles. Look at this. A nice stack of Bibles. I'm not going to go through each one of them. I'm going to show you that I sold four Bibles, okay? One lady bought three, and the other one was single. Um, these are the most important book in the world, period, okay? Shane, this book and Christ changed my life, and this is how I'm doing uh, work here. I'm sending these out. Uh, people do need them. Some people say, well, why are you selling them, Mike? Well, we've talked about it. Sometimes people cannot get to the place to buy the Bible, okay? That's the key. And that's why there's Bible bookstores. Somewhere along the line, somebody's got to make some money off of these somehow to keep them being made. Well, basically, I'm going to go through on that. Look for prophecy Bibles like this. This is Jack Van Imp. He is long gone. Uh, Crossway is a good Bible. Uh, this is a really simple Bible. And then look for Thompson Chain Reference Bibles. This is a Thompson Chain Reference, so keep your eye out for those. To show you, these four Bibles all came out of bins. $85 for all of them and 14 on the shipping side. So four Bibles. You can see I have sold hundreds and hundreds of Bibles. I feel like, hey, there's four people who are going to get those, Okay. I'm pretty sure. Maybe that one lady said collect them, but I don't know. Hopefully they will go to four people and change their life. That's what I hope. All right, here we go. I shouldn't say hope. You know, sometimes language gets confused. I should say pray, okay? Uh, I, it, it, I'm still human. I still make other mistakes. I think sometimes people forget that, you know, but eh, I am not perfect. I'm far from perfect, folks. Just forgiven. Oh, here it is, the last one. You saw, if you watched my video, you saw these Steinbeck nutcrackers I got at a citywide Morgan Hill garage sale. And this was the first place I went to. I thought I was going to have a stellar day. I had a good day, but I didn't have a stellar day. This was stellar. <coughs> this is the Wizard of Oz. There are four of them. Um, $10 each they wanted. Bang, took them. Now, I thought I was going to get close to 1000 but two of them had a few issues. Uh, and this is the Cowardly Lion. And on the Cowardly Lion, you can't see it. One of the crown pieces was a little chip. Ah. And the Tin Man, he had an axe that looked like somebody had put it back together. Okay, nothing big, but, you know, you have to disclose those. So, uh, I did. And they have the original boxes. I'll have to redo these a little bit, get some packaging in there so they don't get damaged. We sold them for $600 plus $70 shipping. Do not be afraid. People always ask me, Mike, how do you get away with putting that shipping so high on some things? They feel it's high. Whatever it feels like it is, that's what it is. And that's the way it goes. If somebody's going to want something, $70, I'm going to make sure you get $70 worth of packaging the best I can, okay? I'm not going to give you a 10 cent job. I'm going to sit there and try and make sure that this item, that's telling you this item is fragile. I got to do some work to get that to you. That's in general. That's what I'm talking about. Whew. There you go. That's 23 items. Now I got to package these up. I got to go wipe my brow. I'm sweating out here. Super hot. Anyhow, that's that's it for today. So I appreciate every one of you. Don't forget, if you want to leave a comment, do it. And I really appreciate every single one of you. Don't forget, hit the subscribe, the notification, and the bell. That's all we ask. That's, that's it. Very simple. Okay. Thank you again, and I'll see you in my next video.